Hey guys, in this video we're taking a 90s G-Series van and we're converting the front end from a 70s G-Series van. I will show you step by step how to do this, how to hook up the lights, how to make the lights be adjustable, how to put the blinkers on, what to cut, what parts you will need, everything. Hello everybody and welcome. In today's episode, we're converting the front end on the Chevy G30 okay guys so i bought this grill for 75 dollars pretty good right i mean i did have to buff it i do have a video on that how to get the chrome to look as mint as it does this thing is basically mint but what i didn't really realize until i got it here is you need more than just the grill like in order to put this thing on i'm gonna need like the bezels for the lights the blinkers all the stuff that i didn't really think about i just jumped on the grill right so i had no choice but to start looking for some type of source for these parts like these bezels and grills and that i had no idea how expensive they were one of those grills on ebay is like 1500 bucks the bezels for the lights are like 250 dollars each it's insane so i quickly realized i needed to start looking around for an actual old van so I could get those parts to make this work. Well guys, here it is. So I ended up buying a whole entire RV literally just to get the front pieces. I paid $650 for it. Might as well show you inside just for fun. So yeah, it's actually super nice inside. Uh, my kids love it, they play in it and stuff. Uh, basically I'm thinking, guest house guys why not so i'll have a guest house and i'm gonna put my front end on this van because i don't really care plus it's probably never gonna be on the road i got it just for the front end so let's go outside guys and i'll show you some differences okay let's pop the hood guys okay guys so as you can see there is some differences so i mean the fenders are the same the bumper is different the blinkers are in a different spot um but it should all work. I mean, it will work, but we have to take off the grill and basically the stuff in behind it because this has round lights. Uh, there's gonna be probably some wires. So, and the bumper is different too. I got a mint bumper, we'll see what we'll do. Okay, first thing first, let's take off this grill. A uh, couple bolts right here, really nothing to it. Let's start with that. Couple little screws here. So we'll get those off. We'll pull the blinkers off, couple little screws. So we'll start with that. Okay guys, it's getting late. I'm gonna put all this stuff away, organize it all so I know what's what. Um, so I'm noticing a few things here. I don't wanna say yet, but like this is like welded to the fender. So that's one piece, but it's also welded to this piece, which is like, welded to the frame as far as i can tell so like this is all one piece i i'm gonna have to get creative here and i also noticed that on my other van over there that one there um this part here like see this this part kind of comes out like a v and on my van it's perfectly straight so i mean don't worry guys this will for sure get done I just got to get creative and maybe do a little bit of research. Um, yeah, so I'll see you guys in the morning. Okay, guys, so it's actually a few days later now. And believe it or not, somebody came and bought the motor out of this thing, which basically paid for the camper. So now this whole entire conversion is only going to cost me $75 is what I paid for that grill. And I get a whole entire guest house out of it not bad guys for free okay guys so i parked my van next to this van and i mean i gotta tell you guys there is some major differences here that i never noticed before i'm gonna quickly point them out we're gonna have to get really creative to make this happen see like for example with the hood closed this this like cross member thing that holds the hood open see it's like flush and on this van see this this whole thing sticks out so this is completely different right which wouldn't be that big of a problem all this sticks out more i also noticed this bumper is like perfectly straight versus 
this bumper has like a V to it. Same with the grill. Um, and another thing I noticed is when I pop the hood, like every single thing in here, guys, is totally, totally different. Like, let me show you here. Okay, like for example, like this whole hatch thing for the hood is completely different. See, I thought I could just change this cross member and I would be it, but now I'm seeing that even the hood is different. Like, this is not removable. Like, look at this hood and look at the other hood on the RV. See, like, this is all different. So I can't just unscrew this and put it on the other hood. It won't work. Everything's like a different shape. And like, this is all different too. But the problem is this hood is so beat up and rusty in that, that I don't want to put this hood onto my van. Um, like, you know what I mean? Plus I got flames on it. I don't want to lose those. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I might cut this cross member in half so I can have like this half of it original, right? Because this is on here, this is on here, like this is on here. And then I could maybe put half of the other one on and weld it on somehow. I don't know. So that's one of the differences for sure. I don't know if it's gonna be different under here and if it's gonna matter, but I need to put this front end on that van and that front end on this van so that one doesn't look like crap in my yard. Okay, I'm gonna start by removing this. It's pretty straightforward. Couple screws, guys, no big deal. Okay, guys, those came off, no problem. Now we just got a couple screws here and here. Um, and this will come right out, so that's easy. Um, these vendors are totally different. Look at that shape compared to that shape. But I think we can definitely put that or this front end on that. I don't know. We'll make this work, guys. Okay, guys, so we got that off. Um, now we're going to take this thing off right here. Uh, there's one, two, three, four bolts. And then there's one down here. Uh, there's two in the middle. You just got to reach them from underneath and one on the end and that should come out um see that part there will be covered by the new chrome grill i do plan on keeping this beefier newer bumper i just think it looks way way cooler than that bumper plus it'll be safe still and i don't want to change the fenders and start cutting things to get this thing apart i want to make this work with as little work as possible all right this should just come right out and that's that okay guys so i got that off and i mean there's so many differences here like even this 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 member thing here see how it like lines up with this rad and stuff on the other van see it's like this thing would never fit onto this van with with the way the rad and stuff is um i think i'm just gonna custom fit that grill i'm gonna make it fit onto this existing stuff like i don't think cutting these out and messing around is even worth it i think i'm better off to pull these lights off and honestly figure out where to put the hole and just cut a circular hole out and then i'll be able to take all this mechanism here and install it and as far as this thing here it's there's just so many differences i would have to change the hood and everything so what i'm going to do is take a permanent marker and for now i'm just going to mark it like this so I can get an idea of what's sticking out. And then I'm gonna open the hood and make some decisions, guys. Okay, guys, so what I'm thinking of doing, right? I marked out where the hood closes. See, like, there's no way for me to put this in. I mean, I could either cut this thing out and weld it onto this or what i'm thinking of doing is literally cutting this thing right in the middle here and then attaching this piece and cutting this in half as well i just got to figure out exactly where to cut it so that way i get this front lip here which is where that grill attaches okay so i'm gonna decide on how to cut this right now okay guys so i kind of changed the plan a little bit so what I did is from that line, like where the hood closes, right? I put just regular standard electrical tape. I just put a st strip of electrical tape. So what I'm gonna do now is on this side of the electrical tape, 
I am gonna cut this thing with just an angle grinder like this, you know, safety first, goggles, all that stuff. And I'm just gonna cut that line there. And I'm thinking maybe the grill could go in underneath, but we gotta start somewhere. So we're gonna start by cutting that right now. And anytime you're grinding around the battery, uh, either pull it out or at least cover it up. Just like that, so you don't get any sparks on it. Okay guys, there really isn't much to using one of these. You just hold it tight and you just cut. And I mean, you know, this is like your own risk kind of stuff. Um, make sure you subscribe. Okay, we used up three discs. Let me show you what's next. So we basically cut it just like I said, see? Uh, but on these corners, right, we can't really get in there with this. So we're just gonna cut them like this. Just, just like a little angle like this for now. So I'll quickly cut those two corners. It will knock this thing off. Okay guys, so we got it off. Just like I said we would. Okay, so that's what that looks like now. Um, okay, I'm gonna do some experimenting and show you guys what's next. Okay guys, so I got the old rusty grill kind of on. Um, the lights are in the way to really see what's going on, but see, what I think I can do here is, basically instead of putting this on top, I think I can put this grill in underneath this and possibly screw it just right to this. I don't know yet, because I gotta get the lights off. Uh, I might have to cut like these low parts out, so I'm gonna have to cut that out. And this a little bit, we'll see. I'm gonna get the lights off now. Okay, so basically there's one, two, three, four bolts there. And we're just taking these whole things off so we can just take uh, the adjusters right off. These are all coming out. So we're gonna take those and those out next, guys. Okay, guys, we got the lights out, so I'm trying to fit it again. So as you can see, like if I put it on top of this, it sits too high. Like the hood wouldn't close and see these don't really line up. So it basically has to go, I think, I mean, we'll find out, but it has to go underneath this. See what I mean? So if it goes underneath, it seems to be just the right height, see? But the problem is there's like these, these low spots so what we got to do is we're going to get the grinder and we're going to cut like that spot out, uh, this spot out just a little bit, uh, this middle spot out. Uh, also, this is like higher here, so we're going to have to cut a little square here, a little square here, so that can slide in. This little part, I mean, you're getting the idea here, and this a little bit. So I'm going to mark those out and cut little things out of them and I'll show you what it looks like guys okay attempt number two to fit this thing so it does seem to fit everywhere except for right here see I didn't cut this out because that's where uh, the stick goes and I kind of want to keep that the way it is so I'm thinking I'm just going to bend this part of the grill down a little bit just with a pair of pliers. So I'm gonna bend that and see if it fits. And the second thing I noticed that is causing me a problem, well, there's two things. Let me pull the grill off and show you. Actually, I'll show you right now. So right here, see there's these type of things on the fenders. I'll pull the grill off and I'll show you. So there's one on that side, um, one on this side. So that's getting in the way. Plus the blinker is gonna have to be there. So we're gonna have to cut those out, guys. And the second thing is for the AC, right in here, see there's a hose right there that's hitting, not letting this grill go all the way in. Um, okay, let's pull the grill off. Okay, so first things first, this thing, so I noticed I can actually push on it. See, watch, I can actually bend this in, so this might be okay. Yeah, oh yeah, that'll work. Okay, so I'm gonna just bend that in. Ah, nothing broke inside of there. It has uh, lots of room to bend, as you can see, and it didn't crack or anything. So we're good there. So one thing done. Okay, so now for these parts, I'll show you on the other van right now. 
yeah see on this one this just kind of goes straight down and there's nothing here and there's room for this blinker so i think we can cut this out um there's room there let's see what happens we'll make it work guys okay we're gonna put the grill on and mark it with a marker okay guys so we got this in we bent this down like i said and that works so everything's working good there i mean one thing i could have done if you're doing this yourself i could have had this lip come out a little bit more so i cut it a little bit too much but it's not gonna matter you're not gonna see any of that anyways the hood will cover it all up plus if i have to i can always weld something on we'll get to that but yeah if you were doing this so you could have made this a little longer it wouldn't have hurt but you still would have to cut some of it see um you know at least up to there anyways okay so that doesn't matter um now we're gonna go in here we're gonna get a marker and we're gonna mark these out so i'll do both of these and then we gotta decide what to do and also i noticed that right over here see there's like that thing that sticks out for the original grill which this fan see doesn't have so we're gonna have to either bang that in with a hammer or see took the grill off so it's got these kind of things sticking out which also affect the grill going on see that one doesn't have them so i think this we can just bang in with a hammer or we could cut it off if we needed to. I'm just gonna bang it in, no big deal. So I'll bang this in and I'm gonna cut this out and I'll show you guys what that looks like when that's all ready. Okay, that looks good. Let me show you. Okay guys, so we ended up cutting that out. There was a little piece here too. We cut that out, had no choice. And we cut this thing out. It should be good now. Let me do some more experimenting, guys. And let's see what's next. Okay, guys, just a little sneak peek. I put the good grill on. Man, that looks so nice with that bigger bumper. It looks sick, as the young kids say. Okay, guys, so I'm dry fitting this again. And, okay, there's basically I'm down to, like, two problems now, which are pretty big. So problem number one is like the blinkers see i do have to take a grinder and i gotta cut this out and i'm gonna have to cut a hole in here to make the blinkers fit in there right they have to fit in there so that's problem number one i'll show you on the other rv really quick see that's what that kind of looks like right and that just goes in here and the grill goes on so that's problem number one and problem number two is like see right behind this bumper here like this part here has like a like there's like a V, right? See how it sticks out in the middle? There's like a V shape to it. Well, the one on my van isn't like a V. It kind of it kind of comes out like this, and then it goes straight, and then it goes in. So it's it's a little bit of a different shape. And what's happening, see when I'm when I got this grill on, see what's happening is see that one part just like i described see it's like that part that hits it and this doesn't really want to go on so i mean i got i really only have two choices choice number one like there's no way to pull this thing off um and that one off and start cutting like i don't want to spend much time on this like i'm only like maybe five hours into this whole thing if not only four hours plus i really like the look with the bigger bumper like that looks really really nice um i'm thinking of figuring out exactly where that cross member is and i'm thinking of just like bending the bottom of this grill just a little bit up like this so it just clears that you're not gonna see it and even if you do it will just look like it's supposed to be like that the only other option I honestly would have is to pull the grill off. Let me do that. Okay. And I mean, pull the bumper off, get a grinder and, you know, like cut these, these corners off. I mean, that would work, but I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, like that's the choice I'm having. So what I'm going to do is on this practice grill, I'm going to do that and see how it looks and 
how easy it bent and stuff. Okay guys, I got the dummy grill on and it actually looks very promising because I literally have to bend it basically um, like from this thing right here basically to this bend which on the original one would go over the bumper rails but see here the bumper rails in a different spot but that all works so it should bend pretty easy like it'll kind of twist here i'll put a piece of tape on it just so you can see okay so basically that's where i gotta bend it from from there to there i'm gonna pull this out and do it okay so in order to bend this see i got two pieces of wood equal length on the other side kind of clamped together so if you want to get a nice clean bend honestly all right let's just do this okay let's see what that looks like so i think that is the answer to our problem i'm going to do that on the other side and I'll show you guys if that works. Okay guys, so I did exactly what I said I was gonna do and I bent it and look at this. So that works perfect now. Um, yeah, you know what, like, see, it, it doesn't even look funny. Like, you know about it now in the video so you would notice it, but like, see, watch. It just is the way it is, right? You don't even see that part anyways. Just looks like that's how it's supposed to be. But what we're gonna do is just to do it a little bit better actually so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend this just the way we bent it on the new grill but we're actually gonna bend it a little bit higher than we did this one so we'll bend it like higher than this and then what we're gonna do is it's gonna come out a bit and then we're gonna bend it down so we're gonna have like a bend like it's gonna come out like this and then go down so i'm gonna do it i'm gonna bend the other one guys right now and i'll show you how that looks i'm doing it okay here it goes no going back now guys Okay guys, so this honestly seems to be working right now. See, we can push this in all the way. See, that lines up. You got this sticking out a bit, but honestly, it just looks like it's supposed to be like that. You would never even know unless you're like a van expert. You know what I mean? Um, that looks super good. So what we're gonna do now is we gotta cut, we gotta cut this hole out for the blinker. So we're gonna mark that. This thing has to come out. Let's start with those. See if we can get the blinkers working on both sides. And then we might still maneuver this a little bit. I'll keep you guys posted on everything. So as you can see, if you're not willing to cut some stuff up, this conversion will never happen on you. Okay, I'm gonna do the other side now. Okay guys, so I mean, see these are cut out perfect. We'll just have to cut a hole, drill two screws for the blinker. So I think the next move now, in order to really see if this will work is, see I, I close the hood, I put this on, and I mean, you can't see nothing in there. So that looks good. Okay, let me pop the hood. Okay guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're grabbing a self-tapper. So this is a screw that has a drill bit at the end of it. It drills its own hole. So so this, this thing's sitting on this part right in the middle here. Uh, we're just gonna screw that in. We're gonna start with that. 
I got it all centered. Um, just so it's like attached. That way we can close the hood and figure out exactly the height of these sides. And I mean, realistically, if I would have had these a little bit longer, so I overcut them, you could even bend these down with a hammer to the right spot and then put a couple self tappers there, self tappers there. So now that you watch this video, you're not going to make the mistake I made, but we might still be okay. Okay, so I'm going to start with the middle nut bolt. Okay, guys, I mean, that worked perfect, honestly. It looks clean, no big deal. Um, so what we got to do here now is just figure out the exact height here, see? Something like that. Uh, we got to do it by eye. And then we're going to hammer this down. That's, I think I can get a self-tapper in here. There's enough. Right now, I don't have to weld anything or do anything. I just put it right on. And same on the other side. So I'm going to do those two right now. Okay, I got a little block here. Put this in like that, just so I can put the self tapper in so it stays exactly where I want it to. Okay, guys, you get the idea. See, I mean, that looks good. Nothing wrong with that. So we're gonna do that to the rest of it okay guys so i got that attached and i mean it's solid it looks good with the hood even open like watch when i close the hood it looks great i mean it looks wonderful so i think the next step here now guys since we got this all aligned is we're gonna figure out exactly where to make the holes for the blinkers guys so we basically have to replicate this no big deal we'll drill two holes and we can just cut a square out with the grinder or something we'll figure that out Okay guys, so we're, we're gonna have to eyeball this. First, we're gonna make that center hole for the wire to go through, and then we're gonna kind of push it in and move it a little bit so we can scratch the paint so then we know where the holes for the bolts go. And that just goes in there underneath the grill. So we're gonna do that right now. Okay, we cut the holes out. Now we gotta put the grill back on and figure out where the holes go for the screws. Okay, so we got the blinker in the hole, as you can see. Um, so what we got to do now is just like perfectly center this thing and then we got to just scratch like we're going to push on it and we're going to scratch the little spot where the bolt's going to go like you know what I mean and then we're going to do that to both sides and then we'll be able to figure out exactly where the holes are guys. It won't be a big deal. Okay guys so we got the grill back off see so we marked where the hole is with the screw we just kind of scratched it. So we're going to drill both these holes, uh, you know, just, just with the drill, no big deal. And on our lights, see like one of the bolts broke off and we're taking it off. So all we're going to do is just grind this off with the grinder so it's flat. And then we're just going to drill a second hole just right there all the way through. Right, we're going to get the one in with a nut on the back. And then the other one, we'll line it up once the grill's on. And we can just put a self tapper right through, get it, and it'll just, it'll all work. But we'll pre drill a hole here though first so the self tapper can just fit right in there and then just self tap into this. So it's super, super simple stuff, guys. So we're gonna do this and the other side. That's our plan right now to drill these holes. Okay, guys, so I did exactly what I said I was gonna do. So we got that, we got a hole there now. And then on the other side, see, we drill a little hole and we grinded that off. So now this can just go right in there, like so. Right, and then see that hole can just go in there. We can put the nut on the other side and we can even leave it loose because I made it a little bit bigger. So we have the ability of moving the light around and we also have the ability of going like this, right? And then once it's all secure, we can just put a self tapper and that's done. 
Okay guys, things are going super good, but I just, I mean, I'm covering everything in this video, right? So I'm trying to get this blinker in, and I realized, see it doesn't go in all the way. Uh, this, this car has a little hump here, which the other car or the other van doesn't have. So I could either hit this with a hammer and try to bang it in, or maybe just cut a little slice in it, and then hammer it in. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so I cut a little slice into it right there, as you can see. There, that should do it. I can't believe how different these two vans are, even though they're both Chevy G30s. They're the same van, but they made so many little differences over the years. It's actually crazy okay guys it's the next day it is raining a little bit but nothing can stop us so we got a big umbrella so i'll tell you the agenda for today guys so the blinkers worked out great everything's looking good um you know what guys in order to attach the bottom of this uh grill we're gonna have to pull the bumper off unfortunately this is a rust free van that's always been rust proof so it's oiled up everywhere so it should come off no problem there's basically uh, one nut there on the inside. I believe there's two on this, two on this, and one on there, and that bumper should just come right off. So I'm gonna do that right now, guys. Okay, guys, I got the bumper off. I actually ended up uh, just taking these nuts out instead from the back, or these bolts uh, from underneath. It was super easy, and then those two corner ones. So that came right off. Okay, guys, so now, I mean, we're close to getting this grill on. I decided I'm going to take a grinder. And see, remember how I was telling you guys how these corners stick out a little bit too much right there? Um, it all kind of works already, but I'm actually going to take a grinder. And I'm just going to just take just these little corners off. One there and one there like just minimal and then i'll kind of hammer them in just to give that more room so i'm gonna do that first okay guys so i ended up just cutting a little x here and on the other corner see what i mean just like that so now what i can do is grab a hammer and i should be able to push this whole corner in guys Okay, that's huge improvement. Like, look at that. So with, with that grill being bent a little bit, that should work. Still gotta do this side. See how much more that sticks out. So we got that compared to that. Okay, I'm gonna hammer the other side uh, and dry fit this grill again. Okay, I dry fitted it. I mean, it fits awesome, except for right here, this thing hits now. So I'm gonna unscrew this screw and I'm just gonna bend this this up a little bit. I don't think it'll break if I just bend it a tiny bit. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'm putting the grill back on, guys. Okay, so I just unscrewed this, See, and I bent this thing in. Not sticking out at all anymore. Okay, grill time. Okay, guys, things are looking good. So what we're gonna do first is in the middle here, see this thing? Uh, there's no hole there. So we're gonna drill a hole. I checked on the other side, there's nothing there. We're gonna drill a hole right there that's a little bit smaller than this bolt. And then we should be able to put this bolt right in the middle. Uh, we might have to put a couple washers so it's not like right against it. We might want it like right there. So I'm gonna do that right now, starting with that. Okay, so I made a hole. I put that bolt into it. It made its own thread in there so it works perfect, almost like a self-tapper. So I'm gonna take all these, put them underneath, and then put the bolt through. And I mean, once the bumper's on, we might have to remove one or add one, but I'm estimating this will be good. Okay, let me do this. Okay, so that worked super good. See, there's a nice space. This is on here solid. So now what we're gonna do is, I mean, none of this lines up. Even that one doesn't really line up. Uh, we might do something thereafter, but I think what we need to do is <coughs> drill a hole right here. And then, see right in there, you gotta put your hand in 
and on the back here make sure you're gonna get you know on a spot where it can drill all the way through and we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna put one of those big bolts right there and then that will basically see like if we put it right there that'll suck this right in see that looks awesome so I'm gonna do both ends right now and I'll show you what that looks like guys okay so we made the holes see and they're just the right size to have that bolt go in what we got to do is we got to make this hole a little bit bigger right we'll just use a carbide tip you could just use a bigger drill bit just so the threads don't catch there you want them only catching there so i just wanted to point that out okay guys that totally totally worked i mean this thing is on super good as you can see it even looks good the blinkers work everything's working there so the only thing i want to do now is like see the parts that we bent out so we can basically bend those back now um like at least in some areas okay i'll do that right now okay so now this should be pretty straightforward so it still needed to be bent just the way we did it See, that looks a lot better already. There, perfect. Okay guys, honestly, you would never even know I bent anything there. See what I mean? It just looks like it's naturally got a little bit of a curb there. So I bent both these back. So now the only other thing we can really do to attach this grill because it's on super duper good is i mean we could put an extra self tapper there um you know there so we'll do that just to strengthen it a little bit maybe one here and other than that that's good and then right here see th th this almost lines up it's lower a little bit but i think i can put a, a bigger washer and put a nut there too and that should all work and i mean and i'm not gonna like super tighten it so it squishes this i'm just gonna just put one there and on the other side and this grill is on guys okay once i do that we're moving on i'm going to show you guys how to connect these blinkers up so they properly work and hopefully i'm done by one o'clock because i actually have to take this thing to work i gotta be at work for two so i gotta get at least the blinkers working and then i can drive it's daytime no big deal okay so the first thing we got to do with this blinker is see we can kind of adjust it so we got to get it perfect right about there and then we're going to take the self tapper remember i pre-drilled a hole there and we're going to screw that in and that's going to do two things one it's going to attach it and two it's going to give this a ground which is a negative because this this light only has two wires coming out of it two positives one for the running lights one for the blinker the negative is in the, the frame of the light so it's a little bit different than the original one because the original had plastic covers but that's no problem i'll show you how to hook it up so we're going to start with both sides getting these on perfect okay guys this is pretty straightforward so this is just your parking light so you're going to pull the light bulb out put electrical tape all over this you don't need this for anything um this one here so there's three wires usually the negative the ground is the black wire so i'm guessing that's this one and then you have your blinker and your running light same as this so in order to tell which one's which super easy you just cut one of them so let's cut this one and let's see what stops working there so this one this brown one now we know this is our running light and the blue one is going to be our blinker let's shut it off and check so blue one blinker and this ground wire we're not going to need it for anything so we can just cut it and put tape on it and just throw it in okay now we take our wiring harness from the rv right and this is the blinker piece so we're going to cut this off um, and we're also going to cut off the other side which looks like this it does have a little bit more wires but don't worry about that i'll explain all that okay so here's our new plugs basically these two brown wires are the same wire these two blue ones are the same wire so you can literally just twist these together at the end and twist these together at the end here there's just one 
So one is for the blinker, one is for the running lights. I don't know which one's which. The ground, like I said, is in the body of the light. So we're gonna have to uh, strip the ends of this and plug it in and, and, and see what happens. Maybe we got it backwards or not. I'll show you right now. Okay, so we got the one with the two. See, I twisted them together as you can see. So we're just gonna basically plug this in. Um, we're still gonna clean these connectors and all that. I'm gonna leave that out of the video though. Clean them good and put dielectric grease on them. Plug that in. And then I got, the, I got the everything turned off right now. So one happens to be blue. I'm gonna connect the blue with the blue. And the brown with the brown. Okay, now just make sure it's not touching the body of the car anywhere. Okay, let's go turn on the lights and the blinker. Okay guys, as you can see that works. If you had it hooked up backwards, what it would do is the light would be brighter than the blinker. But as you can see, the, the light is dimmer. So we got it hooked up right. So now all we got left is to put this, to this cover on, right? Tape this up with electrical tape and put it in there. So I'm gonna do that off camera and then I'm gonna do the other side and then I'm off to work. Tomorrow we're gonna, in the same video though, tackle this situation with the headlights. I mean, look at the difference from that to this here. There's like a hole there and stuff. So we're gonna have to do some creative stuff to make this work. Don't worry guys, I got you guys covered. Okay guys, I'm back from work. Uh, I got a few hours left to hopefully wrap this up today. So now we're gonna work on these. So the first thing you gotta do guys is we're gonna take this bezel, put it in exactly where it's gonna be. Are you sick and tired of your chrome looking bunk? Well, make sure you subscribe to this channel and I will show you how to go from this to this guys in about five minutes. No problem whatsoever. I mean, exactly. And then trace the circle of guys. The light. Okay, so that gives us a rough idea. Here's the one on the older 76 van. And I mean, this is all pretty flat back here. Um, we're gonna pull these out out of it. So there's a screw there, screw there. Those are the adjustment screws and there's a spring. So I'm gonna pull that out, pull that out, mark the other side and try to just compare that background there to that background to see if I can make that work over there. Let's find out. Okay guys, so I unscrewed this, disconnected the spring, it's still on here. Uh, see, there's just a hole there basically for that to go in a little bit. It's a little bit bigger, see? So no problem, guys. We're gonna go to this van right here. And all we're gonna do here, guys, is we're gonna put this basically where our circle was. You know, we'll center it. Like, you have to use your, your artistic skills a little bit here. Okay, so basically 12 o'clock, nine o'clock is where these screws will go, right? You eyeball it from your marker on the outside and you do that All right so you get an idea and then we're gonna have to cut this something like that should work okay so we're gonna cut this out with a grinder actually guys i think i can get in here without pulling anything off yes i can so make sure all your wires are far away back so you don't cut them for your headlights, the original wires. Boom. Okay guys, well, you know what? That totally worked. Um, the only thing is I gotta make this a little bit bigger. This just isn't going back enough. So off camera, I'm just going to get the grinder and make it a little bit bigger. But I got to make sure to keep this part here uh, because that's where, see, the top screw for the adjustment's going to go. Um, somewhere in there. So I got to make sure that's still there. If not, I'll have to just get creative. 
and this one should be good okay so i'm gonna do that right now okay guys there it is i made it bigger um it totally works now this recess is just the right amount um just the way it's supposed to and don't worry this will be fully functional adjustable light uh just like factory no problems okay so what we're gonna do now is see this top bolt so that spot right here we're just gonna grab some pliers and we just gotta straighten this see it's kind of bent So that way that adjustment screw has something to hang on to. There, this is, like I'm like maybe 10 minutes into this, guys. Okay, so that's that. Okay guys, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take this bezel. See, I put these little clips on here. Don't worry, we're gonna cr shine this thing up. I'll show you guys how to clean chrome later or I'll give you a link at least to one of my chrome cleaning videos. See, we're gonna screw that in and then that'll give us an idea of where to adjust the, put the adjustment screws. Okay guys, I mean, this is really working out. So, so I'm ready to drill a hole here uh, for the top adjuster and then see right where this kind of like bends in, that's where the, the screws gotta go kind of like right there. So what I gotta do is I'm just gonna bend that straight guys at least in, in this spot roughly. So I got some pliers like this. I mean, whatever, it'll work. Don't worry about it. You do what you gotta do to make this work. See? Yeah, that should work. So now when I drill the hole, this is flat. I might have to cut a little bit out here. I don't know yet. Okay, let's see how this looks. Okay guys, so basically you put this in now. And I mean, you gotta eyeball this thing perfect. Like, so you wouldn't want it like this, right? Or like this. You gotta get it perfectly in the middle of this uh, light bezel here. And see, and you can literally figure out where that hole's gonna go in that hole for the adjustment. And there's enough room here for this to move. So you will be able to adjust it, no problems. Um, okay, so I'm gonna drill that hole and that hole right now. Okay guys, so this is the adjustment screw. So what we're gonna do is we got a drill bit here that's just a little bit smaller than, than this, this. So then when we drill the hole and we screw this in, it'll just make its own threads in the metal, just like a self-tapper basically. And that's all we're gonna do, uh, do. You could use a tap and die set if you wanted to, but I don't even think we'll need to. So. That's what we're doing. This is a 732, I believe, drill bit, guys. Okay, I'm gonna get started on marking out those spots and drilling those two holes. Okay, guys, so see I drill the hole there. I drill the hole there, and I already just, basically I just took a screwdriver and I just started screwing this into it. And I mean, look how good it's in there. See, it made its own thread. Good enough. We're gonna put some grease on here so it doesn't rust. So I'll do this one and that one. And we still got the spring left, so we gotta figure out where that goes. Okay, so here it is on the old fan again. See, we got that lined up, that lined up. So the spring is right there. See, in the hole for it, it almost kind of lines up. See, like, let me pull it out and show you how it works. See what it's doing? Right, so we just have to drill a hole like that. So I just have to figure out exactly where to drill that hole. Okay, so I got this all lined up. So the hole basically is like right there. So I'm gonna mark that with a marker and then I'm gonna transplant that hole onto this fan. Should be somewhere around here. So I'll do that pretty straightforward, guys. All right, see, so we got that lined up, that lined up. See where I put the mark? That's where the hole has to be, right? So then I just marked it right there. So now we're gonna drill this hole for the spring, guys. And we're gonna use a drill bit that's just a little bit bigger than this thing here. Okay, so we got the little hole in there, as you can see. So all we gotta do now is just grab these pliers here and 
just a little bit, we're gonna bend it. That might even be good enough, right? So that way when we get the spring, see it just goes right in there, like so. Okay, so I ended up bending it more. See, that gives you a good idea of how much I bent it, right? You take this thing and now, see that just goes right in there and it's actually like really, really tight. So it's not going nowhere. Boom, there we go. So we got the spring. The bolts let's let's put this bezel in and don't worry guys we're gonna have to take everything apart once it's all done and we're gonna get some etching primer and we're gonna put this on etching primer is like a primer that uh sticks to bare metal so i'm just gonna get a little brush and just paint paint all the cut parts like everything that we cut i'm gonna do okay guys it's in the top the side the spring and I mean, this is a fully adjustable light. You just turn this in. I mean, I'll even show you guys. See, watch this. As you turn it, see it's going up. Fully functional. So that's that. I'm gonna kind of eyeball it for now. Um, and then we're gonna do the electrical part of this, guys. Okay, now to wire this up. So I pulled both of these out. So basically this is the setup this van had. Uh, it was like low beam, high beam, and the way it works is when the low beam's on, only the one is on. And when you put your high beam on, only the high beam's on. Some cars both are on. So this would be complicated if that was the case. But since this one turns off when the high beams are on, we're perfect here. So basically the way this works is, I don't know which one's which yet, but there's a negative. And then there's two positive, one is a low beam, one is a high beam. So this has two light bulbs built into it. There's a high beam and a low beam inside of this, right? So what we gotta do here, and I mean, they kind of made this easy for us. So you got a black wire and a green wire. Um, so this is for one of the lights, and then you got a black wire and a brown wire. And the way cars are, black is 99% of the time negative. So. Let's cut these right here, right now. We're gonna cut them. And also on the old harness from the RV, we're gonna cut these plugs. There's two of them that go on to those lights. Pretty straightforward. Okay guys, so we cut these two off the harness, off of this thing, right? Those will fit the, the new lights or the old lights, I guess, from the old van. Um, so basically like this one has more, that's not a big deal. You just twist these together and pretend that that's one wire. Twist this together, pretend that like that's one wire, right? And then you got your negative. And I mean, they make this super simple for us because on this fan, the colors are the same. So you got a black and a green, black and a brown. So just so you don't get confused. So the two negatives, so the two grounds, um, you can just twist those together, get it? Pretend like that's one wire. And then you just, you know, twist that with the black one on that. And twist the brown with the brown and the green with the green. Okay, I'm gonna do that right now, guys. Okay, I mean, to me, this is pretty straightforward, but some people don't know. See, I got all the greens together. So that goes into there. I got all the browns together and I got all the grounds together. And this will work now. So pretty straightforward. Okay, I'm gonna twist these really good, tape everything up with electrical tape, and put the light in. Okay, just before I throw the light on, see, that's what that should look like. And I mean, the light's pretty straightforward. Uh, you just put it in and there's like one, two, three little screws. I'll do that right now. Okay guys, here we are, it's the next day. So we're basically done. So what we gotta do now is we're gonna take this all apart I guess I'm gonna keep this in the video, but see, I don't like how that looks because you can kind of see it underneath the bumper and all this kind of stuff, see? So we're gonna paint all of that black. Okay, guys, I got everything back off. And I mean, the second time around, now that I've done this so many times, that literally took me five minutes. Okay, so this is what we gotta do now. See, it's like from all the cutting and all the grinding, wheels and everything see there's just so much crap on here 
Like, you know what I mean? So what we gotta do now is we're gonna pull out the pressure washer and we're gonna pressure wash this completely clean, you know, all in there, everywhere where metal shavings went from grinding. We're just gonna clean this super duper good. Okay guys, just right before I wash this, I figured it would be worth mentioning it. So I'm grabbing one of these type of wheels. I'm throwing it on my grinder here. And just this front edge here, I'm just gonna kind of round it. This, this like makes it super smooth, just so there's no sharp edges. It'll almost look like factory once I do that. So I'm gonna do that and I might just in here, some of these like sharp corners just kind of round them off just so if I ever put my hand in there I don't catch it. So I'm quickly going to do that and then I'm washing it. Okay that looks a lot better. Now we got to wait for all this to be completely 100% dry to do the next step. Okay guys everything is dry so now we take a scotch bright pad these, you get these at automotive stores. This is like the equivalent of 320 grit sandpaper. And basically everything that we want to paint, we're just gonna, we're not going bananas with this, but all the visible parts, you just gotta scuff them up. Otherwise the paint won't stick to it. So we're gonna do that to this whole entire area, right? That we want to paint all around here. Okay, so I'm gonna do all that. And then as soon as that's done, we're gonna grab some self-etching primer. You can use a spray can. We're just gonna use this in a paintbrush and we're just gonna, well, let me sand this and show you. Okay guys, so you basically just grab a brush like this. You take a little bit of this stuff and you're just putting it on the bare metal parts. Like see around here, this will prevent it from rusting. This stuff sticks to bare metal. Self-etching primer, you see what I mean? That's it, that's all you need. So you put this on. Like this is not time consuming at all guys. See like that area with all the bare metal. Doesn't have to be perfect. And that's it, give it five minutes and you don't even have to sand nothing and then you can spray paint whatever color you want. Okay, I'm gonna do that to everything right now. Okay guys, so all we're gonna do now is just get some black spray can. Automotive is probably your best choice and just everything that's gonna be visible through that grill. We're just gonna paint it a little bit black. So it's nice and shiny looking. No big deal, including this whole thing. Probably three light coats is what you want to do. You get the idea, right? And then around these lights too, because you can kind of see this stuff if you look closely, like between the chrome and the light. So we're not going to do the whole thing. We'll just do what's visible, right? Little things like that make a big difference, guys. All right, I'll show you guys when it's all painted up. Okay, guys, so there it is. And I mean, that looks incredible. Um, yeah, so now what, everything that you see through the grill, it's going to look really, really nice, guys. Okay, so now we're going to start by putting the grill on. Whoa, is that high gloss black colored rust paint? That looks absolutely amazing. Sure is, buddy. Let's put the grill on and see what it looks like. Okay guys, there it is, all done, successfully. Check it out up close. Everything looks great. So guys, make sure, make sure you subscribe to this awesome channel and in the description below, there's going to be a link on how to put one of these puppies on. Subscribe, guys.